guys go in. It's the day after Christmas. I got a Sinnoh Stone, not for Christmas. I forgot a very important Pokemon to evolve with my Sinnoh Stones. My 100% right on. So real quick, before we jump into this Heatran raid, maybe I can get an uh, Earthquake on this? If not, no big deal. But they're all kind of waiting for me. Okay, Rhyperior, whose scale has been fixed, clearly. Mudslap Stone Edge, that's fine. I just need to jump in real quick. Oh, plenty of time. Well, I might have been better off before evolving because I had another Pokemon with Earthquake, but I think we'll be okay. Just to use all the Earthquakes I have at my disposal. All right, we're gonna get food. We got two large fries, please. And you know? Pretty sure I brought you here before, right? A long time ago. For some reason, I grew up pretty close to the world's oldest operating McDonald's. Exciting, I know. But it has a gym. The gym has a raid. And now I'm catching a Heatran in the McDonald's Museum. 2665. That's pretty good, right? Oh, whoops. Held that one a little long. Take a look at this. It's got one perfect stat. McDonald's Manual. Actually, movie recommendation. If you haven't seen The Founder yet, check it out. It's kind of about the start of McDonald's and how all this happened. Interesting. Especially because I grew up right next to this. Starting today with a mini mail time because I kind of need to reuse this box to ship something. But I have more packages. They're stacked up right over there. We're gonna come back to those later on today. How does this box work? Yo Nick, earlier this year, I was handed down the task of taking over admin for Athens Georgia Pokemon Go group, and your videos have helped inform me so I could step up to the role. I did this Sandshrew a while back and saw it's one of your top gen one Pokemon. Enjoy this as a thank you from me for all your hard work. Oh, oh God, I broke it. I broke it already. Oh, got it. Nope, it's upside down. Sand true. I heart JLP. Whoa, we got some pins too. A pizza bat and a prince. Do oh, it's a dove crying. I get it. Thanks for the pins. Thanks for the sand true. And thanks for the box. Starting the day with some Filipino breakfast. Oh, that was my catch streak, but I wasn't recording. We always have Filipino breakfast at my aunt's house on Christmas, and I didn't get enough, so. Round two. All right, waiting for food. Latest batch of seven kilometer eggs going up. Um, we'll talk about the batches that I hatched off camera right after this, but. It's gonna be more of this. I think this is eight because I accidentally put one of them in a regular incubator, so another two-ish kilometers before that hatches, but in the meantime, just throwing it out there. Has anyone had any luck with seven kilometers? Oh, yes, oh my goodness, finally. Finally, a new Pokedex entry out of a seven kilometer egg. Chingling, that's baby Chimeco, and it's pretty much a Pokedex entry. Also, all these eggs that I'm hatching right now are from Japan. I opened gifts from all my friends in Japan to try to get a full batch of Japanese eggs just because I thought maybe that would help and, well, I got a chingling out of it, so I would say it helped. Not directly, but in my mind. Up here, it definitely helped. How much? So far, just a little bit. Yeah. Which reminds me, you know what we're still missing is Happiny, Baby Chansey is a Gen 4 Pokemon, and it's not in... Well... I think that's gonna be it. That's all eight. So, let's talk about uh, other recent 7-kilometer batches. I think I've been through... Two, three, four, five. At least five batches now, maybe six. 
the one batch, the first batch of eggs that I did off camera when I started my little holiday break here, the last egg in that batch finally paid off and I got my first ever shiny baby Pokemon off camera. I had a really big reaction. I'm pretty sure I jumped up in the air off camera. But I got the shiny Togepi out of it. So, you know, I, uh, I evolved Togekiss just a couple days ago, right after saying you should get a new attack on your baby Pokemon before evolving them. I'm gonna do this now so I don't forget. Grab an extra attack on my Togepi because this will be my PvP Togekiss, eventually. Not sure if I wanna spend the dust on it quite yet, but soon. So cute. I finally got a shiny baby out of a seven kilometer egg. That Chingling though was the first new Pokemon that I've hatched, even with all the off-camera batches. Still no Munchlax, still no Mantike. I did though, right after hatching that Togepi. Literally five minutes later, three wild Pokemon later, I pulled the shiny Santa Pikachu. So we'll be hanging out, at least until the holiday event ends. Finally made it up on my shoulder. Now, breakfast. I went for a little bit of a non-traditional little fusion here. Put the longanese in a breakfast burrito. I'm a sucker for breakfast burritos, so had to do it to him. I took a nap. I think I still have holiday food coma. So since I've rearranged the apartment and for now, there's a Christmas tree where my mail time table usually is. Um, over here, I guess? Welcome to the la- Am I not sitting in the center of this table? No, of course I'm not. There's two chairs. The last uh, mail time slash Q&A of 2018. And let me just find my cues so I can A them. Let's start this mail time with a little Hashtag ad. For the sake of the FTC not coming after me. Here is a brand new Go Backpack. Customized with the Trainer Tips logo. This is an official promotion. Go Backpacks are back and they're back in team colors. This is, I mean, you guys know it, I wear it every single time I travel. It's the best backpack I've ever owned. Features, of course, include a nice back pocket here for all your portable chargers and extra phones, I guess, if you have them. You got pockets inside for a laptop, for a tablet, stretchy pockets for putting things in there, pockets on the inside. I keep my laptop charger in here since I have three of them. Always got one in here so I never lose it when I'm traveling. They don't normally do that. They don't, these backpacks will not assault you, so don't worry about that. And then, of course, these nice insulated pockets on the side. Keeps your super expensive water bottles nice and cold when you're flying 14 hours on a plane. Ooh, the Go Backpack. That's new. So this is a relaunch of the Go Backpack in team colors. Uh, Louie, you've met him before on the channel. He's based in New York. We met him during Community Day. Uh, out there for Dratini. He's relaunching the backpacks in team colors. Of course, I got the special trainer tips edition here, but these backpacks will have the team logos. So, rep your team, obviously. Team Instinct here. It's a great backpack. It really is. In fact, now I have to plan my first trip of 2019 just so I can wear it out somewhere. Links in the description. The Kickstarter campaign is live now and for the next 30 days. So now's your chance. I always get people asking, are backpacks, are, are Go backpacks still available? The answer is yes, they are. Go get them. Okay, now let's move on to some non-promotional package openings. And while we're doing that, I have some Q&A. Well, I have some, yes, I do have the Q's and the A's, actually. That is correct. First question, whoa. Hold on. First question. Any idea why Niantic would keep cycling through the same legendaries for research breakthroughs instead of giving us missing Pokemon 
from the Johto and Hoenn regions. It's nearly been two years since Johto launched and still no Smeargle. So today, Niantic announced in-game and on Twitter the field research breakthroughs for January and February. The next two months, it's going to be a grab bag again. The same Pokemon we've had for the last month, Articuno, Zapdos, Moltres, Raikou, Entei, Suicune. They're also adding now Lugia and Ho-Oh, so a potential eight legendary Pokemon, eight legendary Pokemon we've had in research breakthroughs. Uh, well, this will be Lugia and Ho-Oh's first introduction to research breakthroughs. But eight legendary Pokemon we've had multiple times. Lugia and Ho-Oh were just here for a raid weekend again. Um, these are Pokemon we've seen over and over again. So for the next two months, January 1st through March 1st, these are your options for research breakthroughs. First of all, let me say this is an opportunity to get Lugia and Ho-Oh in uh, under 1500 CP in range for the Great League. So you'll have to trade them as research breakthroughs, their IVs will be too high. But if you do trade and get lower IVs, you can get Lugia or Ho-Oh in Great League. So that is the one new possibility coming out of this. Um, again, all of these, well, not all of them, maybe we'll see Raikou, Entei, and Suicune's Shinies introduced. That would be something new. Otherwise, yes, this is a lot of recycling. And in my opinion, two months of recycling well, it's a little bit too much. But the question is, any idea why Niantic would keep cycling through the same legendaries? Honestly, I'm not sure. Uh, we did see a new Pokemon introduced in Shedinja through research, but again, that Shedinja introduction was sort of because it was a difficult Pokemon to implement otherwise, and that was sort of their way of just getting it out there. Smeargle's issue is not in um, obtaining it, Smeargle's issue is in coding its moves, I guess, which is probably why Niantic has held it back for so long. Personally, what I would like to see from future research breakthroughs is uh, sort of a throwback to when we had Snorlax. We had Snorlax with a legacy move, Body Slam, in research breakthroughs, and now with PvP out, I would like to see some Pokemon introduced as research breakthroughs with potential either legacy moves or even new uh, research exclusive moves so that we could have more interesting options for PvP. Again, you can make the argument, and we can continue making this argument, that there are people who didn't have a chance or who are just now coming back to the game who never got any of these legendary Pokemon. But, I mean, that's got to be a minority, right? I think most of us, by now, most of us, if you haven't gotten them yet, I'm glad they're coming back for you. But I think most of us have had a chance to catch these legendaries so far. Now, Hey Nick Hans here, you probably don't remember me, but I sent you a Celebi poster about one and a half years ago. Since then, a lot has changed. Uh, in January of this year, I was diagnosed with stage 4 cancer. It was like being hit by a truck. I couldn't even pick up my phone, let alone play Go. Slowly but surely, I fought through it. And my first community day was Charmander, and I was ecstatic. Uh, it's been an absolute journey for me. And the most important part of my recovery were your videos, because you always made me feel involved and included when I couldn't play. Um, Hans, thank you so much for sending this. Um, I'm really glad to hear that you're doing better and, and you know, you're back on your feet, you're out playing and grinding again. Um, yo, no way. This is amazing, man. Thank you so much, Hans. I appreciate this. And I'm definitely planning on coming back up to Seattle soon, so we'll connect next time I'm up there. Thank you so much. Next up, I've got a question from Shiro. If you're not following Shiro, follow Shiro, the uh, chibi artist of the community here. So Shiro's question is, what do you think about Calci IV and other third-party IV calculators? And personally, I don't use them at all. I don't use any uh, third-party apps for calculating IVs. I always, and I, I have always used Poke Assistant, the website. You do have to type stuff in manually. You don't get to just take screenshots, but it is the safest way. Any third-party app that actually asks for your login information, 100% not safe. Those are the types of things that can absolutely get you banned for sure because they have access to your account, they could do whatever they want with it, not safe, don't do that. Uh, Calci IV and Pokegenie, I believe, are the two big ones. They don't ask for account information, you don't have to log in. Personally, I believe that Calci IV and Pokegenie are safe, but I'm never gonna say I recommend them just in case they're not safe. By no means are they cheating in any way. It's not cheating to find out the exact IVs of your Pokemon. That's not cheating. But with Niantic, you never know when they're gonna decide to enforce something. Obviously, we've seen them start enforcing uh, bans against multi-account users 
in the last few months, and that was something that they largely ignored before that. Um, we've seen them kind of go easy on spoofing for the longest time and then come down hard on it. So with apps like this, I don't think they'll ever come after them, but I'm also not Niantic, so I can't say that for sure. Keep using them if you're comfortable with them. Personally, I use Poke Assistant online. Now, hey Nick, you're my favorite Pokemon Go YouTuber. Thanks for all the info you've contributed to the community. So here's a gift. This is a print of my every Pokemon ever drawing. This is up to date with Zeraora number 807. And now we have Meltan and Melmetal, 808 and 809. Um, with every form and variation of every Pokemon, total there's about 1,200 Pokemon on here, and I drew them all to Pokedex size. From Chris Keiko, there's Chris's Instagram handle and YouTube channel there, and holy moly, every, every Pokemon ever. I'm not going to count, but Chris, I believe you, that definitely looks like all of them to scale. Look at Waylord down here. This is amazing. Do you see how much we have to look forward to in Pokemon Go? So much. All right, here's kind of an interesting question, one I just want to answer quickly. How should your followers approach you if they see you out and about? Um, the answer is, I'm really just a regular person. You can come up and say hi. I mean, just kind of be aware of the situation. Uh, I've never really had anyone interrupt me when I'm doing anything important. Obviously, if I'm, you know, eating dinner with my family or something, maybe wait till we're done, but, you know, use your best judgment. For the most part, I'm just a regular guy. You can say hi to me. Also, Christmas presents from Zoe Two Dots. Merry Christmas. Hope you have an amazing Christmas and New Year's. Wishing you both a happy and safe end to 2018. Zoe, so thoughtful. If you're not already subscribed to Zoe Two Dots, Go check her out. Haha, <laughs> nice. The Nano Blocks. We got the Venusaur right there. Also, she said in the card, P.S. Sorry, your gift isn't Sandshrew. They never have Sandshrew. As someone whose favorite Pokemon has been Sandshrew since day one, Zoe, I know. They never have Sandshrew. A couple more questions here. What is the next big feature needed slash wanted for Pokemon Go? And I picked that question without, without having an answer in mind, because I don't actually know what to say. We've pretty much gotten everything we've asked for, just about. PvP was the big thing. PvP was the big thing that's kind of been missing since day one. That was one of the things that we were asking for for the longest time. So as a present to you for everything you've done for me, I'm sending you this strange looking back stretcher. I use mine every day, I lie down on it, my back feels good when it cracks. From Carrie and Lady. That's Lady. Carrie, thank you. I'm gonna I'm gonna give this thing a try. This weird looking back stretcher. Let's see how it goes. Thank you, Carrie. So the question then is, what's the next big feature? And right now I think it's improvements to PvP. I think that should be Niantic's focus. I'm sure they're gonna continue developing all these cool AR features that we really didn't think about from the beginning. We never really considered weather as a thing. Um, research was also a surprise to us. I'm sure Niantic has a lot up their sleeves, a lot planned. They are trying to advance AR technology, so hopefully we'll see more sort of uh, AR camera integration. I would love to see PvP battles in AR and be able to have people observing them so that we could do these huge battles where literally everyone could be looking and watching the same battle in real time, um, you know, with spectators. I think it would be a lot of fun. But again, I think that improving PvP right now should be the focus. It's a great start, but at this point it is just a start. I think the main thing that's missing right now is really purpose. There's uh, a lot of people don't see a reason for doing PvP other than just trying to get Sinnoh stones. And I understand that completely. Right now there's no ranking, there's no uh, stat tracking, there's nothing like that. For me personally, PvP has always been about testing myself against other people, um, and I get some intrinsic reward out of that, out of being able to outsmart an opponent or outplay an opponent. Um, I mean, I, I think that's what Niantic was hoping for, but obviously not everyone feels that way or thinks that way. So I think a purpose is the next big thing that Pokemon Go needs, a purpose for PvP. 
if you want a purpose, linked in the description, as you're probably used to me saying by now, sylph.gg, um, the system is live. You can now host beta tournaments for sylph.gg, and starting on January 1st, those tournaments will start counting towards your actual ranking. Um, and we're going to talk a lot more about that very soon. In the meantime, uh, if there's any community out there who's willing to host their monthly cup early in January, typically we kind of envision people doing this on community day, but if you're willing to host your themed monthly cup for, Sylph, uh, for the Sylph League arena early in January, let me know because I want to come out and, you know, check it out. So, uh, as always, I have a stack of cards here as well that I'm going to open up off screen, but I just do want to say thank you to everyone who sent these. This is from Niantic. Um, I really do appreciate the cards and stuff, the letters. I got a holiday card from Niantic. How sweet. May your 2019 be filled with many wonderful adventures. Well, Niantic, I hope my 2019 is filled with many wonderful adventures. And I hope yours are too. See you soon. Wait, uh, one more. I actually had one more question, which was, any underrated or underused Pokemon that would be good for PvP? And I'm not going to answer it right now. We're going to do a whole video on it. So, PvP kind of tier lists and which Pokemon to use in each league coming very soon. You do want to know that, right? At least nine people want to know it. The tweet has nine likes. So, for the nine of you who want to know, we're talking PvP soon.